Hello everyone, uh, just a update really on, on what I'm doing and uh, which is in general chopping and changing between different uh, subjects. I uh, seem to have an attention span of only about 15 minutes and uh, then I go on to something else. But anyway, I uh, recently acquired uh, a reasonable number of... Uh, figures from uh, front rank these are from their 17th century range specifically uh, the British Army around about the time of uh, 1685 to around about 1715 uh, a time of great transition when uh, the Act of Union was taking place and, and the Scottish Army was uh, merging into the English Army to become the British Army. Um, those who've been following me will be aware that I've made a couple of trips up to Scotland recently and uh, looked very, very sort of lightly, shall we say, at um, a number of battlefields. Uh, Killy Cranky, for one. Um, I uh, I have a book here which um, I've I've been. Uh, reading recently and uh, trying to make some sense out of the uh, these sort of religious wars and uh, you know the whole protestant catholic um, monarch thing going on and uh, people having to make some difficult choices and uh, anyway with, with my recent trips up to uh, scotland and visiting these battlefields although i i didn't go into them with the the amount of uh, detail that I would have liked. It's difficult when you've got your family with you, uh, who maybe, should we say, slightly less interested and enthralled than you are by what can, I admit, appear to be uh, just a, an empty field. But um, for me, it's, um, you know, it's, 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 it's full of uh, combatants and horse and cavalry and artillery in it. But, um, I digress. Uh, this is a uh, front rank 17th century range and um, you know I think it's just marvellous really. I mean if you look at this figure alone, one of the officers with the uh, cap in hand, you just look at the uh, the curls on his on his wig there. It's uh, it's incredible that someone can actually sculpt this. I mean I'm assuming it's the, the kind of the lost wax method as they call it that these figures are produced by and uh yeah i mean i just just amazed at the the level of detail um most of the figures um will will do for uh, i think it's a war of spanish succession and um one or two other conflicts around about that time but uh, specifically i'm looking uh at the british army in its in its very early days um dealing with the uh, the first Jacobite rebellions, you know, which are often overlooked, you know, the uh, the sort of the 1689, you, you know, and, and, and several other uh, uprisings after that, but specifically 1689, uh, because the number of the battlefields were very close together, relatively speaking, and um, although Glenshiel, which was from 1719, is a bit further up in the Highlands, um, yeah, I was just amazed by the the level of detail on these figures, and um, become quite enthralled by the uh, by the subject. Um, you, you have, it would seem, um, the last remnants of uh, body armour at this time, breastplates uh, occasionally being worn, and um, pikemen. Uh, it's an interesting thing that um, the pikemen are still hanging on in there as a kind of defensive or offensive formation um, around the, uh, the the musketeers or, or flintlock men. Um, you know, there was starting to be that transition from the flintlock to the uh, the more modern relatively speaking, you know, the, the, the kind of beginnings of the, the brown bess. Um, I'm not being precise on this, but, you know, the the, the 
the weapons that would have essentially been used in the Civil War were starting to give way uh, to, uh, to more efficient weapons. Um, the Battle of Killy Cranky, um, which resulted uh, in a Jacobite victory, um, although it did prove ultimately ruinous to their cause, um, given that they were kind of, uh, you know, forced to a, almost a draw and, and didn't really get much out of it. And certainly after at Dunkeld, which is a, a, a little town just down from Killy Cranky uh, on the A9, if you're you're going by modern terms, uh, at Killy Cranky, the the embryonic uh, Cameronian regiment that became the Scottish Rifles, the Cameronian regiment, they uh, put up a stout defence of the town un unexpectedly and um, and caused the uh, the Jacobites to to uh, suffer heavy losses and uh, and melt away, and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's certainly a very fascinating period if you can understand the technicalities of it all. It's, um, as I say, it gets very religious, very messy, and um, I, I can't um, I can't claim to have got a handle on it, as they say. Uh, but just uh, the figures are, are very, very. Um, exciting I, I i really do like these figures uh, you've got the muskets and hand separate there to to give them a little bit of individuality uh, the old f floppy cap that the grenadiers wore before uh, the the later versions that we know the busby type um have a number of uh cameronians actually or or scottish rifles um from this period um these would have been in uh, red coats, and I'm I'm looking in some detail at the red used at this time. Um, it, it wasn't necessarily the scarlet w that we associate with later periods, such as the Napoleonic. There was um, often a great sort of variety of red used. I mean, the officers would obviously have better quality ultimately, but um, some of the reds did look very brownish to me and um, you know it's worth looking into to give the figures a little bit of um, originality because they would have certainly varied m much more even than they did later. The, the dyes would be uh, certainly prone to breaking down a little bit. Um, as I say that's your Scottish Rifles. The, um, figure that I have here is a sergeant, uh, separate uh, halberd, or would that be classed a lokeba axe? Um, oh, probably a halberd, but um, I'm, I'm loving the facial detail, the level of uh, detail of the lace on the, on the coats, and um, looking forward to getting back into some 28mm. Uh, given that I've been uh, for quite a long time uh, doing some 54mm. Those of you who have looked at earlier videos may be aware of uh, my uh, my sort of entry into 54mm uh, uh, 7th Cavalry and uh, Sioux Indians, which, um, as I say, tend to have a bit shaky hands as you can probably see and uh, I wanted a bit of sort of uh, therapy to get me back in the uh, in the game as it were um, this is a, a grenadier with a very early kind of um, almost cartoonish type uh, grenade I mean they're very much were of the the cartoon type uh, fizzing bomb you know it's uh, it's that kind of thing but Again, floppy hat, and I've seen painted examples on the front rank site, and it's a very, very attractive figure. Very nice detail again. Um, you know, just perfect facial detail. Uniform is, is really uh, coming out there nicely. Uh, the British infantry, 
as I say, um, wide brimmed, um, almost Mexican style hats. Uh, you know, very, very wide brimmed, turned up, and um, you know, quite a different look from what came 20 or so years later. But, um, you know, these are the very, very earliest days of the unified British Army. Um, kneeling, firing figure there. Again, terrific uh, hats. As I say, when I went up to Scotland, I uh, I wasn't able to really uh, to get onto the battlefield. I got onto Soldier's Leap, which was uh, famous as supposedly being where one of the uh, the government soldiers and uh, they were virtually all Scottish government soldiers. There was only one English regiment there. And uh, a soldier is supposed to have made an 18 foot leap from a rock across the gorge. And um, National Trust of Scotland have got their visitor centre there. I, I didn't see very much pointing to the actual battlefield, but I later learned uh, from one of my subscribers, I can't, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but I was advised to look at some. Uh, videos of the uh, Killiecrankie battlefield uh, only to learn with some distress that there are plans to widen the A9 road the main road up through the highlands uh, at precisely the point it crosses already crosses or or encroaches upon the Killiecrankie battlefield and um, according to the gentleman whose video I watched I, th I think it was a Mr Rattray um, he's saying that this will go through where they believe the majority of the dead are buried and um, a significant part of the battlefield, an important battlefield, a very transitional period in time for, for warfare in the, in the British Army. And um, it's still under discussion, but that, that it's actually under any discussion at all is, is uh, symptomatic of wh where we come to. I mean, it's... It's hard to think of the Americans putting a a motorway any, anywhere near Little Bighorn, for example, or Gettysburg. But you know, for this little island, you know, with our wonderful history, it's um, it's a terrible shame if this goes ahead. But um, you know, there is op opposition um, as we speak. Uh, I've also got some uh, artillery figures here, which. Um, blue coats of course um, again wide brimmed hats and um, I've got a, a six pounder artillery piece from their uh, their artillery range and um, you know I'm, I'm overall as I say looking forward to starting to, uh, to paint these I've got uh, I believe sufficient uh, reference material in the uh, Osprey books the one on the British Army. I also picked up a book on uh, eBay, Red Coats, Red Coats and Courtesans, which, uh, well, I'll, I'll read the, uh, the information inside. This is the exciting story of uh, the birth of the modern British Army and its dramatic growth from a small force of cards, regiments, to a standing army of over three dozen famous regiments. The events take place during the colourful reigns of Charles II and James II, uh, a time of political intrigue, petticoat diplomacy and licentious court. Uh, Colonel Williams skillfully weaves a charming tale of romance, war, plots and high drama in a period of renewed expansion in the New World. Six of the original 13 American states were founded as grants of land given as reward by Charles II to his loyal friends. And it's, um, it's not a decent, not, you know, it's not too bad a book actually. It's, um, I don't know if it's the sort of thing that I would normally get, but um, it's very much, um, of that transitional period, you know, the formation of the, the British Army. And um, 
takes you up to uh, I think the Battle of the Boyne, um, which uh, you know has got a lot of uh, resonance these days for people. Um, there's troubles in Northern Ireland and such, but not a bad book. I think it was sent over from America um, on an entirely different historical um, subject. I uh, I got intrigued by uh, something I saw on Jack Kett dating 1549 um, this was the uh, peasants rebellion um, against the enclosure of land um, people were rebelling against uh, the, the land being literally snapped up by uh, the landed gentry and uh, just just seized from the people where the people had generally uh, you know, always graze their, their sheep and such. And um, th th this small book, it's only about uh, 50 pages or so long, details one of the, if I can use the, the term landed gentry, Jack Kett, who was approached uh, regarding his uh, enclosed land and, and listened to the people's um, complaints and decided that they had a point and tore down his own fences and uh, and those of his neighbours and uh, gradually uh, gained a, a considerable number of followers uh, to the point where they were able to defeat the first army sent against them and then um, then attempted to uh, take Norwich and um, Ultimately, they were defeated, of course, by the Earl of Warwick, and um, the leaders were, in fact, uh, hung and uh, starved to death and, and hung up, I should say. Um, this is um, gives details of a, a walk through Norwich around about the uh, castle, and... Um, it's really a, it's a marvellous story which uh, certainly resonates up to the present day. Um, you, you have a, a small sort of uh, explanatory uh, section here. Uh, Ket was really a, a man for all times. He, uh, he has a very modern outlook. Uh, what particularly outraged the authorities was one of their own, as it were, um, had gone over to the uh, the common people and, and stood up for them and um, this they obviously couldn't uh, accept but um, it, it did give cause for concern for uh, a long while for the government and uh, they, w they weren't at all sure of victory but um, by all accounts Kett went to his death uh, very nobly if, if you can do that and um, it is a cracking story. There's a few other books out there, some of them very expensive, but this one was £10, and um, I think it emanates out of a publisher in, in Norwich. It's uh, a very heartening story, and, um, you know, I nearly went off on another collecting spree of, um, of figures, really. I was, I was so close to starting to collect again. Um, but... Uh, I, I've already invested heavily in the uh, the 17th century. So um, while I read about it, it's um, it's maybe not uh, something I'm going to go into, you know, in terms of uh, figures. But um, yeah, it's uh, superb, and and qu apparently quite a number of buildings are still up there. In existence, and um, I, I, I think I may well have a little wander up that way at some point and uh, do the, t the tour, because um, you know it's a it's actually very very heartening story. If if I can just show you this um, section, Robert Kett, a pillar of Wymondham society was law-abiding, successful in business, with much comfort to look forward to through the later years of his life. He has been called a most improbable rebel. It could simply be that this seemingly enigmatic man was a caring soul who became increasingly aware of the growing number of dispossessed people. 
the unjust treatment of the poor and the harsh attitudes of those who cared only for their own wealth. Perhaps a glowing light of selfless reason came to him on his own road to a personal Damascus by which he could suddenly see that the wealthy were bleeding the economy dry and reducing more and more people to poverty. As you may think that now in our time, that all has a familiar ring to it. And um, I think, you know, we, we can we can associate with that. But, uh, you know, ultimately uh, he was defeated, but it's a, it's a very... You know, it, it's not a widely known story, certainly outside of Norwich, and um, and yet it deserves to be because it's one of the uh, one of the great uh, leaders from from history, social and military. And um, as I say, that that's uh, the most accessible and obtainable book on the subject. Though there are others on fifteen forty nine, which was a quite a rebellious year. Uh, all over England, by all accounts. But um, yeah, I'm getting back into the uh, into the stride of uh, of things, and um, you know, getting my mojo back, as they say. Um, I think the 54 millimeter figures did help. Now I'm going back to 28 millimeter. Um, had a bit of an upheaval in in the house recently. You know, we've been trying to clear things and. Um, our garage is uh, the door is jammed shut, and uh, the landlord's not very quick on fixing these kind of things. So we're 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 a bit kind of junked up at the moment, and it's uh, I've been instructed by the wife not to uh, not to pan around or do any long distance shots because the uh, the front room's not in great shape. But uh, we're getting there anyway, and um, you know above all, you continue continue with your hobby because it's um, it's it's really. Uh, you know, for me, it's it's a therapy. Sorry, slurp of tea there. Um, yeah, I'm I'm hope hope to be going back to Scotland in um, a month or so's time, and I will uh, certainly give Killy Cranky Battlefield a uh, a thorough going over this time, uh, rather than the light dusting that I that I did last time. Um, also, I'll, I'll be re revisiting um, Sheriff Muir and uh, Dunkeld which is um, where I'm going to pay particular attention to um, bullet mark from the battle feel, uh, from the battle uh, in the walls of the local church and uh, the leader of the uh, Cameronian regiment who uh, who was shot early on in the battle buried there and um, I hope to uh, I hope to be able to update you soon with some painted figures, which, um, as I say, um, kind of lack space a lot of the time to uh, really sit down comfortably and relax and do some painting. So, you know, struggling really at the moment with uh, with with getting a, a settled kind of painting spot, but uh, certainly still uh, it doesn't stop me uh, collecting, and um, it's all I can do to. Uh, to not be enthused by every TV program that comes on the History Channel or every book that I, I obtain from Amazon, but I, I'm trying to, as I say, um, concentrate on one thing. And um, you know, 17th century, uh, late 17th century, is it at the moment? Um, and a study of these uh, early Jacobite battlefields. Um, I've been watching everyone's videos with enjoyment and uh, looking forward to everything uh, that you're producing. And um, if you stay with me this far, thank you for listening and, uh, and watching. Okay, guys, thank you.